one take Let's east, one take west. All right, weight it more heavily to the group that does not have Pike. Oh, I'm with Pike. I <laughs> <laughs> see you, me, and Vax go on one, and these three go on another. Yes. Yes. Good. Go. Good. I'll take the gnomes <laughs> on my shoulders. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Give you a big hug. All right, what? so we have Grog and the two gnomes and the fuck? rest of you. Hey, we started yes. something. Hey, we'll, we can't we'll stop. Run. As you guys dart off, uh, making your way around the still very ominous and creepy sun tree to your left, um, you can see all the various muddy prints of all the scraping skeletons that came through here. And in the distance, you can still hear echoing shouts, combat shouts, Commands being sent throughout. There's, there's still very much a uh, an aggressive presence of the resistance in the city. You have no idea whether or not it's on the winning or losing side at this moment, but it is still active. Grog holding both the gnomes, and you can feel Pike is lighter than normal, and you know her weight quite well as you used to putting her up on your shoulders from growing up with her. But yeah. there's also this strange kind of vibration to her body, like it's not physically there, but yet it does feel like there's physical presence. Pike, you're glowing and kind of buzzing. Are you dead? Astral projection. Your ass what? Immediately you hear the <clears throat> that familiar sound of a large, heavy mass slamming into the ground. And as soon as you turn the corner, you can see uh, there are three people left in this one resistance brigade. Oh. Uh, there is a pile of wounded and or killed soldiers around its feet, and it looks like it's been nearly untouched. This one just apparently got the drop on, or at least they were not fully prepared for what they were up against. And it's just swinging this giant club in the air around towards them. They're all kind of keeping their distance, not knowing if they should run or keep fighting. As you just turn around the corner, uh, once you guys roll initiative. Uh, Grog and Scanlan, you guys are up first. Would you like? I'll go first. I will take out my wand of magic missiles. 25. 25 points of damage to the giant. As you, as you jump off of Grog's shoulder, plot your wand, it all of a sudden glows for a second, and from that point, like a swarming enemy missile storm. These unerringly hitting uh, arcane missiles slamming into the sides of the giant. You see bits of its flesh kind of unfolding and spilling off the side, exposing some bone underneath, as all of a sudden its attention shifts. Looking over its shoulder at the three of you. And I'll sing a song of inspiration for Grog. Alrighty. Well, now Whitestone's got problems. And now we really can't solve them. <laughs> unless we make really deep cuts. <laughs> so, baby, show me that Grog blood. <laughs> <laughs> Grog, you're up. Hearing this, the beat in the back of your head is scaling, stomping his foot into the muddy. This is my jam! <laughs> 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 I go into a frenzied rage. I would like to. And I rush the stone giant from behind. I aim at the back of his right knee. Go for it. Yeah. 17. That hits. Oh, yeah, that hits. 26. Yep. Hits. Yep, yep. And uh, 19. Hits. He's very slow moving and a very large target. He's very easy to hit. So, what you got? Uh, 22 for the first one, 13 for the second one, 15 for the third one. Wow! You slam the hammer in the side of one of its calf. It buckles for a second, and you can see the muscle itself kind of snap, and a piece of bone's now jutting out of the side of its leg. Now we got Grog's blood. <laughs> With that, you swing the hammer on and slam it into the bone, actually jamming it deeper into its leg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you pull back, there's still flames kind of burning the outside. You can see the flesh sizzling from the impact of the burning hammer. Swing it once in your hand, whack on the other side. This time, the actual leg kind of bursts out that side and it kind of falls almost a little bit. It's it's sort of walking on the stump of a leg now. Just a flesh wound. Look, stop that! Chicken! Chicken! Look, I'll have your leg! Right! Oh. Right, I'll do you for that. Pretty much destroyed the bottom half of its uh, its middle of its calf to its foot. And part of its jaw is broken open, and you can see jagged, broken teeth underneath. And its oh. tongue kind of lolls out the side and just oh, reaches up with its pretty. club to come on down. That's a natural twenty. Sixteen points of bludgeoning damage have to eight. Fourteen points of bludgeoning damage have to uh, seven. Pike, you're up. Woo, go Pike! Okay, so I'm gonna guiding bolt. Seventeen definitely hits. So go uh, go ahead and roll seven d six radiant damage. Oh. What? 24 points of radiant damage. Yes. So as you stand there for a second, you pull your, your holy symbol up, kind of you know, putting your shield to the side, and as you release your hand out in front of you, this uh, 
beam of divine energy streaks out, slamming into the uh, zombie giant. As it hits, it continues to burn like a stream into its body, kind of searing the flesh in a path as it does. As it impacts, it leaves this kind of glowing, pulsing divine symbol across its chest of Saren Ray. Oh man, I forgot the pie! Yeah! Oh! Oh man, I mean, you know, that, that, that man, that, that, that could be a rocket ship or, or a lighthouse. Nah, man, you straight up got a d on your chest. Oh, oh, next, the next attack against it has advantage. Okay, that brings to the top of the round. Uh, Grog, Scanlan, you guys are up. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> if he started to lean down, I want to, I want to take his head and turn it into a T-ball target. <laughs> all right, all three hit. 21, 15, 25. 25, already. 23, 33. Come Three, on, three holy shit. Nice. So as you swing the hammer upward, whack, it hits alongside the side of its skull and you can see its skull actually cave in and crack a little bit. The bone and flesh kind of scrape the way where it cracks. You see a little bit of kind of black uh, brain mass begin to leak through. Using that, you spin the hammer around and hit it again in the same place, whack, finding the weak point this time, just the anger to smash through. This time, it caves inward and you can see bits of bone kind of jam into its one still semi-functioning eye. Uh, its head now kind of loosely pushed in on one side. The jaw hangs a little bit loose. The third strike, you come down, whack, hit it from the other side. The jaw just dislodges and goes flying off. Chips. <laughs> Pike, look, his he's holy. His jaw's dislodged. <laughs> so it's just, oh, the lower half of his jaw is missing. It's just part of his tongue kind of dangling loosely oh, out of the bottom. So part of its head caved in where it just. <laughs> Show my hand up your skull and work you like a sock puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, Judge here. Some of you familiar with the episode that this came from, episode 32, Against the Tides of Bone, have noticed that there was no fastball special between Scanlan and Grog. Typically, this was reserved between uh, Keyleth in elemental form and going ahead and chucking Grog. This did, however, happen 12 episodes later in episode 44, The Sunken Tomb. Let's take a peek. I'm going to cast Bigby's hand, and I'm going to do something unorthodox that the DM is going to have to approve. Okay. <laughs> Where were you putting the hand, by the way? Around Grog. Okay. And I would like to swing Grog like a hammer at the back of the thing. You're fastball specialing him with Bigby's hand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am so about this. <laughs> Make a strength check. 23. Okay. The hand grabs Grog, rears back, and just full strength lobs towards the hole. <laughs> Grog, you're flying up in the air with the added strength. <laughs> behind you. What are you doing? I'm, I'm just slashing as I'm flying through the air at Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I got uh, all right, Scanlan, you're up. Can I get in an angle where I won't hit Grog with lightning? Pretty much every angle you're gonna hit somebody aside. Oh, from I don't the care guy. about those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should. Pike's with me. I gotta do this right. I will angle up. This time, I would like the lightning to come from my ass. How can you even aim like that, Scanlan? Oh, I have practiced aiming things with my ass in this in this campaign. Twenty-eight. <laughs> 28 points of damage, all right. <laughs> the bolt of lightning shoots off in, into the sky, kind of arcing through its body. You can see where uh, part of its neck muscle was torn. It oh, kind of fuses into its shoulder from the impact of the bolt and <laughs> almost falls over. I'll inspire Pike. Uh, I'll turn to her and I'll say, Further. I wish they all could be cleric gnomian girls. <laughs> <laughs> so on the zombie giant's turn, it recovers from the bolt of lightning Looking at this large target in front of it, it sees this tiny little morsel. And starts like, you see it's, it brings up its leg, it's partially destroyed, just thump, thump, thump begins to move forward. As it comes up towards you, it, its tongue dangling out, this horrible gurgling sound coming out of what is now technically its open throat, um, as it brings its club upward to the As air. my reaction, I bring up my shawm, it's a horn, and I blow the note. The note is like uh, Dumb and Dumber, the sound he makes. Ah! Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? 
with that most annoying sound. Just sort of mash all my fingers down. That's okay. The note I blow. And is this, is this your? Uh, this is my I'm just trying to uh, get uh, cutting words. Cutting, cutting words. Word, okay. Cutting word. All right. Well, it rolled a uh, twenty-one to hit. Fuck. <laughs> so a twenty. Does that hit? That hits. All right. So. Horrible <laughs> <laughs> squeaking sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my shawm! You take uh, 20 points of bludgeoning damage from the first strike, and your shawm is kind of bending. <laughs> Not quite. You're probably going to have to buy a new one or get that repaired. Oh, no. Um, it brings up its club one more time. <gasps> oh, God. 13. That misses! <laughs> <laughs> this time, kind of bring its club up. You can see the arc, and you. I'm <laughs> ducking down to work on the shawm. <laughs> Whoosh, just swings completely out of your view. Oh, what? What's that? <laughs> Pike, you're up. I'm gonna go up to the giant where the open wound is. Where yep. That guy just just broke it open. I'm gonna use my mace and I'm gonna start ripping where that wound is. Seventeen. Oh, Seventeen again. Seventeen again. There you go. Both hit. Twenty-three. Twenty-three on on the first hit. Oh shit! I forgot about the second hit. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-one. Yay. All right. Forty-four. The Mace of Disruption actually has a different effect. It's not about the frightened thing. Oh. Um, if it has 25 hit points or fewer after taking this damage, it has to make a DC 15 Wisdom saving throw, which it fails. Yes. Which means? Um, so as you as you rush up on the side of it, your Sprinter's Boots carrying you. This 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 blur of divine gnomish energy. You see through her somewhat shimmering, radiant form. The hair itself glistens against the rain. It almost doesn't even touch. Uh, somehow immaculate in the middle of combat. You, you find it slow motion in your head, and for that brief moment, you remember how much it hurt to see her go and how happy you are to have her here. Um, however, you, in the middle of your battle trance, Pike, rush up, shield ahead, you take the mace, and seeing the open wound, slam the mace in there once, wham! As you hit, the actual undead flesh burns away from the impact, leaving this kind of ashy swath of missing flesh in its body. A creature gives out this weird, gurgly bellow as the missing jaw goes, Aah! using that moment as it, as it rears back, how do you want to do this? Yeah! Yeah! She's, she's gone. She's gone. She took her headphones off gone. and did a lap. <laughs> oh my gosh! Want him to sort of uh, just, just, just explode with a, with a radiant glow. You kind of see this this uh, foothold on its knee as it's it's kind of trying to keep itself alive. You leap up using your spinner's boots onto one of its knees. Jump in the air. Dropping your shield and two hands on your mace, you leap in the air, slam it downward as it, the mace impacts on the front of its chest. There's this brief moment of pause as it <laughs> cracks into its flesh. Its head looks down at you, and there's a burst of divine energy as this entire torso just <laughs> rips open. Uh, what would be organs with inside exposed, however, are all also turned to ash as the whole body just <laughs> just dissipates and disintegrates. <laughs> Falling into a puddle of uh, liquid, messy, uh, muddy ash and bits and pieces of remaining giant there as Pike lands on the ground, three point landing, mace in one hand, walks over, picks up her shield again, and kind of looks over her shoulder at Grog and Scanlan. Can I, can I faint? Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's always doing that. Welcome back, Pike. <laughs> the three soldiers who are now there looking dumbfounded at this uh, moment kind of step forward and, you know, you you look like fighters, except you have this glowing divine entity amongst the three of you. Uh, steps forward. If I might ask, who are you? And how did you do that? With the deliverers of this town, go spread the word. It all comes down tonight. You're with the Dorolos. Tonight. Oh, and tonight, tomorrow, later. You're not there. Tip attack, whatever. He's <laughs> there. I, I'm just waking up. Wait, what? Tonight? What's going on? <laughs> it goes down to the next 24 hours. If hours is. <laughs> you know, don't put a timeline on it. These things, you know, it takes a little time. So you, you're with the Dorolos? I'm with the Dorolos. Then let it be done. Thank you for the save. When you gather our wounded. And prepare for the next attack. As we as we go, I'm I'm looking at clotheslines 
for any sort of beret type of a hat. <laughs> 13. Not in this weather, not a in this yam- city. Yamaka, <laughs> yamaka anything? No. <laughs> okay. Whitestone, not really a beret kind of people. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Scanlan Shortholt. Uh, I was the leader of the rebellion that just uh, <laughs> defeated Lord and Lady Briarwood. As you get all the way to the eastern side, you're actually outside of the city now. You're pushing into the Temple of Pelor. Looking about, you can see this hefty graveyard, right, that you visited the about two days ago. Um, all of the graves are open. Uh. All of them are just excavated and open. And you get the feeling, you're starting to see where they're pulling a lot of these uh, undead right. from. Uh, you can see there are six, actually six will be remaining at this point, of these uh, soldiers that are now currently hacking away at this one giant that's being pushed up towards the edge of the temple right now. It looks like it's cornered, but it's kind of lashing out like a wild animal. Uh, Percy, you start this off right now. Pull out bad news. Okay. I'm going to take aim, mm-hmm. and I'm going to wait for it to raise its it, its its clubbed hand up. It's it's holding a club. Uh, it's Actually, you, at this view, you can see it's actually a very, very large morning star. It's a very, very large morning star? Yeah. Wow. Drop that. 16. 16 does hit. As you get down to the ground and the echoing explosive shot fired from the bad news slams up as it lifts its, its morning star in the air. <laughs> Two of its fingers get blown off of its hand and the morning star just tumbles. Like I said, on the count of three. One, two, three. Three, two, On the ground, yes. nearly nice. crushing one of the guards nearby, it just barely manages to sidestep as it <laughs> lands on its side, right outside of the uh, the Temple of Pelor. Next shot, I'm reloading. Yep, reload with your second attack. Taking a sharpshooter shot. Uh, 15. 15 hits. 32 points of damage. <laughs> the, the blast, the typical chunk of its physical form, just <laughs> splatters against the side of the temple. Now having uh, no hand at disposal, it kind of glances over with the slow turning head. <laughs> reaches over and grabs a big piece of the uh, stone rubble that is destroyed from the corner of uh, of the temple, picks it up over its head, and lobs it at you across the way. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Uh, that's gonna be a 21 to hit. Oh, that hits. Take 28 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh! And have to make a strength saving throw. Uh, no, I rolled a one. Oh, oh, fuck. So it slams into you and knocks you off your feet prone from the sheer impact. Uh, it actually like kind of rests on part of your arm and you have to like, oh, work hard to push it off. Vax, you're up. I'm watching everything unfold. I see my sister roll up, I hold. I'll stay. <laughs> I suggest you hit, sir. I also like to live dangerously. Okay. Yeah. Back. I say, brother, you remember that uh, giant a few years back? I remember that giant. You're up, and I shoot two arrows for my two attacks. Um, one into his thigh, and then one into his breast, right here. Okay, go for it. Roll for two attacks. Thanks. Give me a lift. I want to try something stupid. They both get hit. They're both uh, 24s. Both 24s. Identical. Identical. Both hit, yeah. 37 points of damage. 37 points of damage. (laughs) Whack! It slams into the knee itself, kind of pushing out the the kneecap a little bit from the side of its softened flesh. Uh, The other one released the arrow, hitting at a very, very uh, defined mark, shattering part of its uh, its rib there in the front, and the arrow still sticking out by about a good... uh, Six inches or so. So uh, I'm going to run up to him and I'm going to start swinging up the arrows on his chest and get up to his head. Okay. So you run up, planting a foot on its thigh, leap in the air, grab onto the arrow that uh, Vex left in its chest, kind of whip upward, and while you're in the air towards its face, go ahead and make your attack. That's a 26. That hits, definitely. 23. 23 points of damage? Yeah, with flame tongue. Alrighty. So as you leap in the air, you bring the blade 
slam into the center of its face, like kind of over one of the eyebrows. It slams into the skull, and using your weight, you tear down, dragging the blade across its face. The bone is brittle underneath its 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 flesh, and it actually just hacks part of its face open. The uh, the bone and teeth immediately become visible. Its jaw clenches and actually clamps onto your blade as it reaches the bottom of its face. You catch yourself there for a second. Uh, the horrible scent of its its rotting flesh hitting your body. You manage to take your foot up, push off, pulling the blade out from under its its toothy grasp, and you land on the ground right beside it. Mine fell first. No. Keyleth, you're up. I just kind of meditate for a second and go super calm and start casting heat metal and I start meditating on Vax's daggers. So your daggers are gonna do an extra 2d8 damage. Ooh. I'm gonna do my bonus action to um, cast Grasping Vine. Uh, just so you're aware, oh, shit. Heat Metal does 2d8 damage to him for holding on to it. It's not, it doesn't do additional damage. I said we move forward. Okay, so, just continue what you're doing. Wait, wait, yeah. It's done, she cast it's done. it, it's yeah. gone. Just letting you know for future reference. So Vax, you really take 2d8 points of fire damage if you wanna roll Yes, sir. Um, and you have to make a constitution saving throw versus her DC, or you drop both your daggers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Thanks, Sam. And I'm doing, what am I doing? What am I doing? Constitution saving throw. My spell save DC? 18. Ha, <laughs> that's on! <laughs> both daggers just <sighs> drop on the ground as they both slam into the mud. I look over at Keyleth and go, and I'm like, yeah. What the Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hurt this motherfucker so bad. Not yeah. even watching. She's just concentrating on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then with your bonus action? <laughs> bonus action, I'm gonna wrap him up with a grasping vine and okay, try so you... and restrain him. Yeah, I think he has to say that he's sick. <laughs> yeah, make a dexterity saving throw, I'll be pulled. Uh, it doesn't restrain, it just pulls them towards the vine. <laughs> Since he's already against the wall, you can pull him. A way or toward. Nothing you do does what it, you <laughs> want it to fail. do. <laughs> the information's right there. So you're pulling him towards you? You can pull him Ooh. towards the ground, can't you? And then he like goes, Ugh. Yeah, can I pull him towards the center of the earth? Because of his, f sure. Uh, <laughs> That's a no. All right, uh, he fails in the DC. That's a total of 10. We'll say for the time being, he is considered grappled. Okay. Nice! You did something. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Man, I'm so cool right now. Oh, I'm just <laughs> concentrating so hard. You finish concentrating, you release the grasping vine, it pulls a little harder to the ground, you see its form go. <clears throat> it doesn't look very happy. And you see Vax going. <laughs> and he's like, these little. Little oh, cylinders of steam rising up from the ground where his daggers are currently. I'm just like, what? Well, deal with it! It's gonna be awesome! <laughs> <laughs> that ends your turn. We're back at the top of the round. Percy, you're up. I'm unpinned and annoyed. I get up, shake it off, pull up for another shot. So, uh. I'm reloading, shooting at his face. Reloading and then shoot. 15 to hit. 15 to hit, that's 15 it. 15 hits. 20 points of damage. Just because I'm feeling like a jerk, I'm. Burning an, I'm burning an action surge, <laughs> reloading, and that hits. My goodness, my fortress, my high tower, and my dude. 32 points of damage. All right. Reload, fire again. That's also hits. Mm -hmm. 30 points of damage. Wow. Uh, and now I'm going to use my bonus action to heal. And if it's 19 points uh, healed. Okay. Giant pieces of it missing of its body looks around and is going to. It reaches down and grabs the Morning Star, and with a second, it's going to swing over woof, towards you, Vax. An eleven and a one. <laughs> it goes and swings wide, and you just woof, duck out of the way, uh, dodge off to the side, and woof, it slams and gets stuck in the mud for a second. Horrible sucking, sucking sound as it tries to pull it out of the ground with all of its might. Uh, you're up. What position is it in? Uh, it's currently like kind of kneeled forward, just pulling its morning star out of the mud. Okay. I go. <laughs> I reach down and I grab the oh scalding hot daggers again and I lift them up. Okay. And uh, lunge and sink into his ribs. Okay, so you take 2d8 points yeah. of fire damage. So, so, yeah, so you take the daggers, kind of feeling through, you take the damage, uh, lifting them up to go in for the attack. That's a 30. Mm -hmm. And the second one is 17. I think 17. All right. That one, 17 in the second attack, the flame tongue, get seven. 
Yeah, uh, he has to. Yeah, if I got burned, he gets burned. He gets burned. If I get burned, he gets burned, right? Uh, I'll, that I'll allow it. That's not usually how the spell works. Oh, okay. But I'll allow it for the circumstance. Well, all right. Since you're taking the damage to do the attack, I'll let it happen. All right, 14. Okay. As you, uh, holding the, the daggers, the searing pain, you reach up, slash both daggers down into the front of its body, shoot, and you drag it across. You can see its chest kind of breaks open, and it kind of stumbles backward, uh, the air expiring from its oh. throat. It pushes it. up and against it, uh, holding on to that shred of undeath that it currently has in its body, not falling to your measly blows. What the hell you think you're doing with that little shit? <laughs> Don't shoot that little motherfucker no more! Go for it, Vex. Okay. Um, I'm gonna shoot him two times through my blazing bowstring, which I still have one left of. Uh, 22, 22 for the first hit. How do you want to do this? <laughs> oh, that Thank God. So Saving her. As he's bent over, and I just saw my brother attack him with fire, I hit him with fire again straight through the eyeball that's remaining. Fuck yeah. Through the back of his head. Okay, so as you release the arrow itself, you can feel the warmth kind of licking the side of your face as the arrow heats up and release it. Uh, it shoots through the air like a tracer dart. Just the giant, which is currently like reaching back, has a hand to palm out like it's going to go ahead and try and palm uh, Vax after the attack. As it reaches up, it just into the back of the eye, and as it sinks inside of its head, it there's this dull. Fud sound like the fire bursts on the inside of its head. Its other eye just awesome. plumps out and hangs fire from the side as, from as, as fire yes. darts out from that open socket. Its jaw kind of goes slack, and it just begins to lurch forward towards you and the guy next to it. Both of you guys kind of step back out of the way as it onto the muddy ground in front of you. I start sticking my hands in a puddle. Pulling around. <laughs> oh. Seeing if I can salvage anything from this giant. Like my hands. Do I see and I do I see Vax on with his hands? Yes, you see him currently like spitting out his hands. What 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 what? Could you fix these? Oh oh <laughs> Whoops! A little too much. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine, no worries. Yeah, no worries. You'll probably get your shit together eventually. Fix it him! Worked, though, I'm sorry. Yeah, it worked, it's good, but they kind of sting a little bit. <sighs> okay, okay. I, I just put my hands in his hands and cast Cure Wounds. Okay. I also just kind of hold her hands for a second. I walk through and <laughs> bust through their hands. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to the guards. Hey everybody, quick note about this scene here. Originally, this scene took place after fighting the Horde in the town square, finding Ripley in the basement dungeon, and then fighting Anders and rescuing his sister, after being brutalized by Grog. In the animated version, this scene took place during the Horde fight, after they first fought Anders, but before they stormed the castle and found Ripley in the underground dungeon. Everybody clear? Great. Here we go. You guys are currently out of combat. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, clutching my bleeding belly, walk over toward Keyleth and say that that was a close one. Yeah. You know, I kind of feel like we've been here before. Oh, right. Oh, right. We have been here before. You know I'm in love with you, right? Oh. And I kiss her. Hey. You, uh... You know I'm in love with you, right? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> now? I mean, this is like the worst time! Come on! Oh! <coughs> Persistent call. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick little break. Quick I want to see what color you turned. Oh my god, yeah! <laughs>
With the horde being routed by the villagers and the two remaining giants turned into undead butter by Vox Machina, we can draw this episode of Critical Role Comparisons to a close. Thanks again to you, my dear viewers, for taking the time out and watching this. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments below, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, by all means, please go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more. I've got plenty more Critical Role goodness for you coming up in the future, as well as many other fun things. If you feel like sticking around, by all means check out the Good Bits playlist and some other things that I have here on the channel. I'm sure that something here will tickle your fancy. And with that, I bid you adieu. As always, my name is Judgment Fish, and I will see you in the next adventure. Take care, everybody.